It's another beautiful Saturday in the month of May, the 18th day in the month of May, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's edition of Editors Forum, where we discuss front burners and, of course, headlines affecting the country. I am Rita Modi, and I'm your anchor for this program. And as we saw, a lot of things happened during the course of the week. Of course, we celebrated Leah Sharibu, that's a Dapchi girl in captivity, who celebrated her 16th birthday while in captivity. A lot of people called for her immediate release and praying that the federal government does something urgent to discuss and, of course, solve that particular situation. Of course, we also had the Minimum Wage Implementation Committee, which the federal government inaugurated. And a lot of people were also accused and, of course, were a bit against it, saying it might actually delay the minimum wage implementation. But the federal government says this is to actually discuss the procedures and processes so that minimum wage can be implemented. And, uh, of course, Gordon Mefle was inaugurated as the central bank of Nigeria governor for a second term. Now, all these things we're going to be discussing on today's edition of Editors Forum. I am Rita Omodia. And of course, I will not be alone on today's edition of Editors Forum. We have guests and analysts who are going to analyze discussions without any bias. But now, today, we're starting with the presidential election petitions tribunal. Yes, as they always say, it is not over until it's over. Remember the presidential elections which held President Muhammadu Buhari of the APC and his close opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, in the person of Atiku Abubakar, contesting closely with it. And after the postponement of the elections and finally the election, um, Atiku Abubakar actually queried the outcome of the election which saw President Muhammadu Buhari emerge as the president of Nigeria for a second term. And he took it over to the Elections Petitions Tribunal. Now, the chairman of the Elections Petitions Tribunal, Zeyla Bukachua, as most people, of course, the PDP alleged, is actually the wife of Akmadu Bukachua, who is actually a senator from the APC. Now, the PDP platform is querying that person, the president, the, the chairman of the Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal, saying she would be biased in conducting a valid elections tribunal. Now, let's take a look at this report, and when we come back, we'll introduce our guests and discuss the issues. from the National Secretariat of the People's Democratic Party on Monday, demanding the ousting of the President of the Court of Appeal and the Chairperson of the 2019 Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, Sena Bukuchua, from the panel. The group alleged that Justice Bukuchua is the wife of Ahmed Bukuchua, Senator-elect in the platform of the ruling party, which is completely unacceptable, a reason she should not be among the panel. The protesters, however, advised Nigerian judiciary to stand up to his statutory responsibility as the final arbiter of any dispute and do what is just in the eyes of the law and in line with the mood of Nigerians. We are also aware that the president of the Court of Appeal and chairperson of the 2019 Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, Justice Zainab Ahmed Bukachua, is the wife of Ahmed Mohamed Bolkachua, the senator-elect on the platform of the ruling Progressive Party APC, representing Bauchi North Senatorial District. This is completely unacceptable. Yes, sir. We are therefore fully support the call by the National Working Committee of our great party to demand that she rescue herself immediately from the panel. Yes. Yes. Finally, we call on the judiciary to continue to remain on the side of the people. As the saying goes, the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. Yes. It is therefore imperative on the Nigerian judiciary to stand up to each statutory responsibility as the final arbiter for any dispute 
and do what is just in the eyes of the law and in line with the mood of Nigerians. Right, you're welcome back. You're still on to Editors Forum, exclusive to Galaxy Television. Then you saw the protesters storm the National Secretariat of the People's Democratic Party, demanding the ousting of the President of the Court of Appeal and the Chairperson of the 2019 Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, Zena Bukachua, from the panel. Now, let's bring our guests into the house. We have Yemi Saka. And Brisibuke, and of course, a Mikamadunago. Now, when you see Mikamadunago, you know that he's here for serious business. Oh, very serious. <laughs> yes, it's serious issues. It's serious issues. All right, thank you. Very welcome to the show. Ambrus looking very dashing as usual. Oh, and Yemi Saka. Like you know, I just knew that guys to get jealous. So, as I said, Ambrus looking no, very I'm dashing. Like, Yemi <laughs> Saka was <laughs> warned that. Are you going to say I'm looking no, dashing? I was only Ambrus, but we leave that. We leave that. Don't worry. Are, it's allowed. All yes, right. Yes. All right, like your warrior, looking Thank handsome you. as well. Thank now you. let's go to today's <laughs> issue, and that's the ousting, the request for the ousting of the Nabu Kachua. Now let's start with you, Yemi Saka, since you're smiling. <laughs> well, it's it, um, because of what we've witnessed in Disha in the last um, 12, 15 months, it's a valid case. You, know, you look at um, things that have happened, you look at um, pronouncement that has come out of the court, even when cases that looks like, um, we, even with, or without, with little or no knowledge of um legal matters or legal education is a straightforward case and you see the pronouncement by the courts and you'll be wondering where did that come from. We, I could cite instances, even when uh, Onoge was at the appeal court, even the appeal court said he, had, he, didn't, get, he didn't have fair hearing at the CCT, he still went ahead to throw out his appeal. So you keep wondering where's the logic in this old drama? You look at um, the issue of Tanko Mohammed, this acting yeah. CJN, there's the prisoners that has been laid even by the NJC. Over, over similar cases, and you wonder why it's in the seat. And you look at um, even the Oshun, um, Abakadaba, Magic, whatever, about magical pronouncement. It, and you, 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 with that, you cannot have confidence in the, the, the judiciary. Because judiciary, the bench is meant to, is expected to be impartial. But like I said here yeah, last week, if I'm not wrong, I think I was here last week, I said, I think somebody is holding the judiciary by the balls, and they are just dancing to the beat <coughs> of one drama somewhere. That's why I believe the PDP has a valid case. Naturally, it shouldn't have been valid. It should have been, it should have, it should have seen it as being petty or being emotional. But because of what has happened and the pronouncements we've seen under this president's administration, I think if you want to go to the next level, we're getting to the next level of judicial summer assault and disaster. Okay, let's hear from Ambrose. Do you actually feel that Zaina Bukachua, her husband, being a senator from the APC, will actually affect our decision at the presidential elections tribunal? Well, in the case of uh, uh, what you call the moral justice, even if it is not te technically or legally correct or legally applicable, if you don't want to uh, um, employ legality into it. But for the case of even um, commonsensical issue in terms of uh, equity, when you have, you cannot be a judge in your own case. And what has happened now is that whether we like it or not, Bukachua, Madam Bukachua, the justice, whose husband is an APC elect. He's already, I mean, senator, senator elect. He's all, he's APC senator elect. He's already compromised. By the virtue of her being a spouse to an APC politician, not just a politician, but an elected officer of APC, whose party's case is coming on, in the just concluded the election, whose party's case is coming on there, then she doesn't have any business being there. So whether it is technically or maybe legally, there's nothing wrong with it. But in terms of morality and equity, just equity and injustice, she ought to have recused herself. So when she recuses herself, just like I think uh, Justice or Dili, Mary or Dili, yes. did something similar yes. some years back when they had a case from the PDP 
uh, her husband in River State and her husband was involved <coughs> in being a PDP chief thing. She recused herself. So that is what people with, uh, with uh, probity, integrity, integrity probity, that they want people like that to do. But we, we remain to see whether she will actually to pretend over this case. Because she, she, in fact, if she does that, that means she has no, uh, the, I don't, I, I will have to question her moral standards. I'm sorry. Because you cannot be a, a judge in your own case because it's her own case. There is argument from the APC side that, look, uh, it is not her, it's her husband. Spouses, are you telling, are you, are you really serious about that? Mm -hmm. What even some companies that make it a law, a policy that they can't even take two uh, they, they, siblings, uh, not a couple siblings or spouses in the same company for issues of integrity that you cannot work. In fact, husbands have to choose at a point. We have had issues of people dating where they came to work in company, they were separate. Immediately they get married. They say, okay, you know the company's policy. Two, people, two of you cannot work here, and husband and wife had to decide who to go. So they, they, if you have that applies to companies, one much more a judicial case. So we are calling, Nigerians are calling on uh, the, the justice to please respect the hallowed chamber of the appeal courts and of the tribunal and recuse herself. We are not saying that she should resign from the court of appeal or whatever, but from that particular case concerning that party in the presidential, she should, and any other party after the election and everything, she, she can still be a member of the tribunal. But okay. when the court cases are going on, you cannot be there. In fact, she shouldn't move because they are saying, well, by the virtue of her office as president of court of appeal, you know, she has to be in that uh, presidential, uh, but she has to recuse herself because okay. she's making a mockery of her judiciary. But what, like Yemi said, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's also, it can, if she doesn't go, it also means that it is an orchestrated drama that has been planned for the past months, starting from the raging of the justices' houses in the, mid, in, the, in the midnight, and then Buta and the rest, and then coming to the removal of the CJN uh, or Nogen then, and planting another one without following due process <laughs> and all those, all those stuff. Ultimately, even if the APC has the, have their way finally, our judiciary will be traumatized and messed up. All right, thank so, you very much. Now, wait, before you go there, Yemisaka, let's see here from Emeka Madinago. Now, I like being fair on this forum, or rather, we like being fair on this particular forum. Now, let's just say she recuses herself, and then the person who comes in the stead is a relative also, or rather, her spouse is also a member of the People's Democratic Party. Emeka Madinago, are we going to be saying the same thing? You see, there's a, <coughs> there is a universal principle. All right which states that where there's a possibility um, that a judge might have some encumbrances you know, in the way of being impartial in a matter, the judge, it is natural justice for the judge to excuse himself or herself. It is a, it is a universal principle in law. That is one. Now, in Nigeria, there's a code of conduct for judicial officers. And one of the... And one of the things in that code of conduct talks about social relationships. It says that judges should not belong to societies, organizations whose membership may put their impartiality in jeopardy, may bring questions, may raise questions about their impartiality. So that's why judges, for instance, cannot belong to political parties, cannot belong to certain groups. Yeah. So what does that imply? Now, you could say marriage is a sort of a social relationship under the law, which is unavoidable. Agreed. But because of the fact that, the spouse, that you know, her, 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 his lordship, Justice Bukachua, is the spouse of an APC senator-elect and the mother of a governorship aspirant under the umbrella of the APC in Gombe State. So you can see that that relationship, spouse, mother, really puts her now, in that, a difficult thank position. You very, I, I, we're given a situation now where she's actually, let's imagine she's actually a member of the People's Democratic Party. We're saying, who, are we you going to have... mean she or her husband? Her husband is actually a member of... The, the, are we going to have the same scenario? Don't Paul? forget that whatever the, the, the PDP files, the APC has a right to counter, to counter it. 
So the PDP has filed its claims. The APC has also filed its counterclaims. So if it was the other case, of course, the APC would raise issue. It is not the first time in Nigeria. I mean, it's not the first time. For instance, if a judge, if the child of a judge or the spouse of a judge is brought before the court, you can't expect that the judge will sit in that case because whichever way it turns, questions will be raised about whether the judge exercised due diligence, whether the judge was really and unquestionably impartial. Okay, the like temple of justice should never be brought to dispense repute or brought under the harsh scrutiny of public opprobrium because it has long-term implications. That's why you saw in the case of um, a judge, mm -hmm. there was a judge, I mean, who was accused of corruption. Why? Of, of collecting bribe from a lawyer to President Buhari. And the lawyer said the judge's uh, daughter was getting married and he sent a wedding gift. Now that raised questions. Should a lawyer not send gifts to a, to a judge who is his or her friend? Then there was also the issue of a judge, I think, who lost the mother. Mm -hmm. Somebody sent some money to support the burial. And people raise questions. So these are things that will strengthen our jurisprudence, so strengthen words, our laws. In other words, if the situation is turned around, the APC will also call. Oh, I mean, it's without question. Let, let's hear from you, Mr. Aka. I think I remember the case is cited. I think it's Justice Ademola. I stand to Yes, Justice Ademola. And but then, in yes. law, if there is a judge that's sitting on your matter, you don't know and you dare not interact or meet with the judge without the presence of this opposing lawyer. So that's the real question on the so-called integrity of the APC, the lawyer to President Muhammad Dubai, even President Muhammad Dubai himself to condo such. Now, in medicine, I know that it's, it's advised that you, sh you cannot treat your, your spouse or your okay. relatives. So we should, if because they think you'll get either emotional or overtly emotional and mess things up. And so is law. And if you look at the first pronouncement she gave, was nobody should. Yes, the people tell you you can't discuss matters outside the courtroom. But it's not the first time we have elect electoral peti election petitions going on in this country. This is not the first time we have edit editors ded dedicating three, four pages editorials to analyze, evaluate, and probably even project the way election trial petitions will go. So why now? So even if we look at our first pronouncement, I start, I, need to, I start to question our integrity and impartiality. In other words, you need someone who is free of any political affiliation to handle that particular Definitely. position. Definitely. And I, that, oh, but let's, get, let's be sincere to ourselves here. It's going to be very difficult for us to find a judge that doesn't have a friend in one party or the other. All but right. because of the peculiarity and the sensitivity of this case, she just has to go and sit down, not necessarily at home, probably in the court, and watch. All right. Anyway, it has been adjourned till May 22nd, but now the Hope Democratic Party yes. has asked the presidential election petition tribunal to stop the acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Mohamed, from swearing in President Muhammad Buhari on May 29th. We do know that May 29th will actually be for the inauguration <laughs> of the President Muhammad Buhari. And as he said, it's going to be a very low-key event due to the <laughs> June 12th Democracy Day, which he announced <laughs> last year. So let's go to you, Amri Sibuke. How do you see to this application brought by the Hope Democratic Party? I think the Hope Democratic Party is just trying to get some... Um, popularity or what would I call it uh, seem to be relevant in the political uh, gymnastics that are going okay. on currently. Um, you don't need to do that. Uh, that will create a constitutional gap. That will create a breach. That will create a, what uh, my lawyer friends will call a lacuna in the administration of Nigeria. Um, it doesn't matter because we have seen uh, in our electoral uh, processes and even judicial pre precedents where people are sworn in. Uh, in the case of uh, Andrew Ba, he mm -hmm. was sworn in two weeks later, he was sacked by the Supreme Court. Uh, other cases are banned where people have been sworn in and they were sacked by the, uh, by the courts. Did he was sacked? Uh, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. So whether he's sworn in or not, that is not the issue. The issue is whether, uh, you know, so they didn't even need to, that. that's why I say it's an exercise in self-aggrandizement and maybe seeking for recognition. Uh, then, in the issue of um, low-key, low key. I don't know what they mean by low-key or high-key 
or mid tempo or level, mid tempo you know, key. You see, these people should get down to business and be serious about it. These are not the things we want to hear. You know, by the time we, we, when we come talk with that, we have to talk with facts on the ground because I'm not a member of any political party. So I don't have the affiliation to start uh, painting words and trying to make the president look good or look better when things are not, when the realities are not on ground. So what Nigerians are talking about, you have, not, we are not bothered whether you're going to do it low-key or whether you're going to do it in, a, in the streets or in the ballroom of the presidential villa or in Nikon or whatever. We don't care. What Nigerians want is roll out your policies for the next four years. Let's see what you want to do. Till now, nobody's saying anything about it. So we don't even know what the president is planning. We don't know the new policy direction. We don't even know whether he's going to rejig his... Uh, next level. His, uh, this thing. So is the next level about Loki. So what are we talking about? So what, let's please, I beg this administration to get serious. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are tired of all these, uh, all these uh, nothings, <laughs> talking about nothings, and things that don't have any kind of relationship with whether to move this country forward or not. So whether it's low key or high key, it's not our business. All right, thank you very much, Ambrose. Sorry, yeah. can I still refer to that? Matter? Which one on the particular case? Yeah, because there is, I mean, the code of conduct. Can All I right, read quickly, that? Can I read some, next up. Under section C, disqualification, it says a judicial officer should a judicial a judicial officer should disqualify himself in a proceeding in which his impartiality might reasonably be questioned, including but not limited to the instances where he or well, just a minute where he. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, All right. Yeah. Where he, All right. so, uh, subsection D, says he or his spouse or a person related to either of them or the spouse of such person is a party to the proceedings or an officer, director of tr or trustee of a party is acting as a legal practitioner in the proceedings and is known by judicial officer to have an interest which could be substantially affected by the outcome of the proceedings. Okay. So it is clear. The code, of conduct, for, from now? the code of conduct for judicial officers, Federal Republic of Nigeria. You can right. have a look Thank at it. Thank you very much. Yes. Make a so in please, in, 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 uh, in addition to what um, Ambrose said, it was alleged, uh, probably some of us unconfirmed though, that the reason they're opting for Loki is because they realized that most of the quote and unquote international bodies or countries will mm -hmm. not be there. No, they are saying that <laughs> okay. they want to do the high key in, on June 12th. June 12th, that's what that, they said. That's where they will invite. But you see, are you not the So we did the inauguration of it in tonight. In, in, both, both, in both instances, money will be spent. But it's not, uh, away it's from not the, about the. It's not just about the money. Now we ask ourselves how serious are these guys as a government? And I, like I said last week, I keep wondering what, what are they doing with the trailer load, truck load of lawyers and sons in this administration? You cannot have two inauguration days. All right. No, the other one is not inauguration okay. day. The other one is we have to break another topic. Yeah, May 29th mm -hmm. yeah, is inauguration, inauguration day. day. June 12th is democracy, democracy day. day. So in subsequent years, I think they want to now move They cannot it even move it. They can't move, can can move, move it. They can't move the inauguration to June 12th. Ah, they can't. Right. Can, why? It's not constitutional. It's, it's not inspired. All right, gentlemen. It's not inspired. It's not inspired. It's not inspired. It's not inspired that 29th. You cannot move it. All right. Well, you're still deliberating on June 12th, May 29th, inauguration. Um, President Mahmoud Buhari on Tuesday, May 14th, inaugurated a committee to implement the new national minimum wage almost one month after he signed the bill into law. Of course, we know that President Mahmoud Buhari signed the new minimum wage bill of 30,000 there, and a lot of people were rejoicing to it. Now, consequently, the federal government will hold the inaugural meeting next Tuesday in Abuja. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Gigay, said this concerning the payment of the new minimum wage, but he did not state when the government would start payment, but said that arrears will be paid any time implementation of the new wage begins. Now, this committee now, according to them, is to look at the processes and the procedures to which the 30,000 naira, that's a new minimum wage, will be paid. But a lot of Nigerians, however, complain about delay because they've given the committee four weeks to go through this implementation before they start paying the new minimum wage. I remember that President Muhammad Buhari said that in May that um, the new minimum wage will be paid. So now the question is, why the delay? Is there really any need for this committee? I'll start with you, Ambrose. 
I, in fact, I sometimes <laughs> I baffle at uh, <laughs> Now you're short of words. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes one of the things that, that are done are inexplicable. Because these are not things you can even do with the logically, you see, the logic of action. It, it, it's not comprehensible. Yet we have men high power, like the vice president is a scholar renowned all over the world, you know, before he became vice president, before he started sharing money in the market. You know, this was a man who goes to all over the world, Europe, America, to give conferences in jurisprudence and law. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happens to them, where they enter governance. And they start behaving in some, you know, uh, some strange manners. Comic manners. How do you, how do you agree? You have already given the, uh, the workers the go ahead, given the uh, announced it without working on modalities. And then after announcing it, you start working on modalities. Now, this issue has been on since last year. The budget was just passed. Yes. The, was it, how can implementation committee now? Are they not supposed to be the ones that have made input into the national budget or what, especially for federal workers, what this thing would have meant for them? Are they saying that they, are, they didn't impute the new minimum wage in the, federal, uh, in, the, in the budget for federal workers? Are they saying that this new minimum wage committee we go back again and send a supplementary budget to the National Assembly for approval. Uh, uh, when we, when we uh, run a country like this, we can never move forward. Because most of them cannot even run their private businesses like this. But when they come to, uh, to, uh, to public office, they run it just like this. Because it doesn't add up. Now you have done everything. Budget has been passed. You are doing a new national minimum reconciliation. Meanwhile, this new national minimum wage is supposed to be a five-year cycle. Mark you, by 2024, we'll continue this cycle again. Because we are supposed to renew the minimum national minimum wage in 2024. We will wait again until labor goes on strike. Is that how we are going to run a country? When, when China and that country are talking about 5G network, they're talking about artificial intelligence, people are moving forward. <laughs> we are still like this. <laughs> so this government uh, has turned governance to a joke. And people are not happy. Even so many people, so many APC members, they can come and create a facade of, oh, we are okay in public. But when they go behind, they, 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 are, they are bitter about it. So I, we are hoping, we are praying, if Nigerians need to go for night vision, let them go, to see whether there will be a new direction from May 29th. Because if we continue like this, it's going to get really, anyway, they have warned us this week that we are <laughs> going to get it tougher. <laughs> so, uh, we are, so there's no light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, there seems to be no tunnel. We seem to be in a deep pit right now. <laughs> okay, Ambrose is going towards another level. But the Labour Minister said that the committee will be made up of seven ministers with the head of the Service of the Federation, Winifred Oita, as the chairman. And the minister also said that at the lowest cadre of employment, whether in public or private sector, would earn 30,000 euros as the law provided. He said, however, the cadre of workers already earning above the minimum wage, there would be consequential adjustment from the top. Now, if you remember last week, there was an issue with the uh, Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund. A lot of people had an issue with the Labour Minister, and they began to call and um, threats his ill treatment on them when they picketed his office on last week. His, his residence last week, Wednesday, and they called for it, Zach. Now, with all this mesh, do you think that that group has actually NLC actually gone too far, calling on the SAC, even with regard to this particular um, committee that has been set up now? Well, if NLC is talking about this committee, I think, for, I think maybe they, they listen to us and they, are, they hit the call of sensibility and rationality. Because what they did two weeks, a fortnight ago was nothing but a show of fury and idiocy, and I probably will not support that. But back to this issue, I think it's... Um, like Ambrose said, at times when you look at this government, when you, when you decide you don't want to say a thing, they don't just dip a, f the thing, a finger into your mouth. They dip a fist into your mouth and you end up poking on them. Because I don't understand the logic, the, the common sense, if I can use that. Even the, the elementary or basic reasoning in you appending a signature puts, out, you get, put, uh, puts an assent to a bill sent to you that becomes a law and you're not taking actions against the law or probably deliberate even affect it or alter it because I don't know what, I don't know the, the mandate of the committee and I don't know what mandate they've given the committee can do to change what's going on. So why are we wasting workers' time? Why we, because the question is, was there a committee set up to actually deal with the results and effects of their bad and poor and shallow economic policies that threw Nigerians into recession 
increasing um, increased inflation and unemployment. Was there a committee in place to look into those junk of policies? And it, it, it's just it's quite pathetic when this little thing because this thirty thousand never cannot take you home. Once you have once you have a child that that falls sick, I have to take him to you out to the hospital to treat malaria. I can assure you seven thousand to eight thousand naira is gone. I still want to delay that. At least they, they said they carried out a lot of audits. They saved a lot of billions from ghost workers. That means as a federal government, they have an idea of people, the, the work, the workforce of the federal government, in the federal ministries across the country. That means with that audit they've conducted, they have people that are in level one to level fourteen, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. So you know, so by just having it's just statistics. He put the data as the data there and just put the whatever there. He calculates and you know the, the, your, the your total expenditure you're going to spend at the end of the year, fiscal year, for remuneration, salaries, and what have you. So, what is the need for a committee? See, governance is not rocket science. If these guys think governance is too much of a science for them to comprehend, they should pack their bags and leave. All right, thank you very much, Yemi Saka. While we still wait for the implementation committee of the new minimum wage to work out modalities for the new wage, they have been given four weeks to do that. Now, talking about unemployment, inflation, and the economy in general, we do know that the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gordon Mifile, was um, um, appointed for a second tenure, and he was appointed 2015 on the good luck. Jonathan and President Muhammad Buhari gave a go-ahead that he should go for a second tenure. But aside that, a lot of people are talking about the economy, and during the screening before the Senate, he said the road to Nigeria's economic emancipation is rough and tough, noting that it will take intense hard work and renewed commitment from Nigerians to make the desired headways. And now we're talking about Nigeria's economy, which is affecting each and every one of us. What are the factors you think are mitigating against Nigeria's progressive economy? The first factor is that our leaders have refused to think into the future. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Global developments are going to force them sooner than later. <laughs> because you're talking about power. Today, you have new technologies in power generation, in power distribution. Rwanda right now has clocked about 70% of power supply on renewable energy. And it's targeting, is inching towards 100% of power supply and renewable energy. And then, understand that there are, you know, you, you have some power trucks that have already been produced by a major electric, you know, I mean, company, electricity company in the world yeah. that just runs, these trucks run on gas, you know. So some trucks, small ones, among the smallest of the trucks, can generate about 32 megawatts. You can imagine what 32 megawatts will power. So, but you have to fill them with gas. So in other words, I mean, you can power a kedja, at least much of a kedja, with one truck. So if you had 10 of those trucks, you're talking about 320 megawatts. And what are we as a nation totally depending on? Just about 5,000 megawatts. You still have the national grid, which is still in the hands of government. At one end, you say you privatize Jenkos, you privatize Discos. But in the middle, you still hold on to the national grid, which you should privatize. Then, again, you're talking about disrespect for rule of law. You don't expect the investors to run into an economy where the government doesn't respect the rule of law. The government doesn't re it chooses the judgment to obey. You, you're just making a joke. Today, Thailand. Thailand is a choice for investors because Thailand, the government of Thailand has brought out a policy that it will help investors in startups. Now, the mistake we make here is that we look at the big companies, you know, that those are the ones government, you know, can absorb a lot of people. So that's why the customs brings out about 3,200 positions and you have over 150,000 Nigerians. Sorry? 500,000. 500,000 applying. Whereas, if you empower startups, small SMEs, startups, you empower them. Let there be an explosion of SMEs all over the country. You will absorb Nigerian youth. What about the trader money? 
program by the federal government. No, you're talking about Kalu Kalu. You're talking about you're talking about Kalu Kalu. But whatever, that's one of the <laughs> that's one of the programs of the federal about, government. You know, one of the problems we have here is that we throw money at problems. You should think solutions through before throwing money at them because one, you have to look at the impact of inflation. You have to also look at how will Cash that, how, far, how far will that trade that money go? Ten thousand naira. How far? Yes, you might say okay, it will help them to start. But let me tell you, this is a country where you have problems of multiple taxation. So by the time the party leaders and all kinds of people, so illegal, take a illegal multiple taxation because don't market a lot, money. a lot, a lot. I mean, I participate in I mean trading, so I know what I'm talking about. You know, by the time the uh, yellowjas and the babalojas bring up all kinds of things. Ask people to bring money for rituals, bring money for this, bring money for that. How much is remaining in that 10,000? Why are we pretending? How much are you going to rent a space? The smallest space in the market. Go and find out a table. Then what are you going to put on that table? Then all the fees and levies and all of those things. What we are talking about is this. Nigeria must now become a productive nation. A productive nation. We must strive to feed ourselves. Okay. We must strive to produce as much as, as possible, you know, as much of what we consume, as much as that as possible. Then we must respect the rule of law. But you know, in terms of the production, we produce it, but a lot of people complain that we don't even have the, the companies to be able to, um, how do I put it now, develop those products. But the Chinese are here. Chinese are here. Have you, have you been to an average Chinese factory? The Chinese are doing the things we say we cannot do because their governments are supporting them. Indians, go and look at the Indians. Okay, I'll give you an example. You look at um, what we call um, nylons, you know. Okay. You find out that there was a time CBN, you know, placed that on 41 banned items, you know, that will not get forex. But because when Obasanjo was privatizing some federal government companies, he privatized LMA petrochemicals and gave it to Indorama. So now you see that that industry, instead of people running away, is now even generating employment. A lot of Nigerians are markets. Yeah, a lot of Nigerians are pumping money into producing different kinds but of. I have somebody that nylons. produces nylon. Yes, okay. nylons. Then you see the Chinese, the Indians, Koreans, Lebanese. They are into heavy. They are into massive industrialization. Now, how are they able to do this in the same economy? where we are saying that we cannot make progress. Our leaders need to think in a different way. Then, I must add one other thing. President okay. Warren, constituting his cabinet, I almost forgot, he should consider having a, either a minister, a full-fledged minister, or a minister of state for e-commerce. That is very, very important. There's a lot of money in digital, in digital economy. Go and find out, go and investigate. There's a lot of money in the digital economy. But you know the unfortunate thing, Nigeria is shut out of many of these spaces because of 419. Let me carry This, you know. <laughs> the ICT minister is an 82 year old man. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no we'll get back to no. you. What, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? I'm talking about putting people who can deliver. You don't, deliver. if you want to reward people, if you want to reward people, there are many positions where you can put them. But please, in key, in key positions that affect the lives of millions of Nigerians, you see the suicide rates now. You know, so what we're talking about is that Nigerians need to regain confidence in their nation. They've lost confidence in their nation. Okay, let's hear from Ambrose Ibuke. What, when the CBN, uh, when the Buhari entered, there was a palpitation that he may change the CBN government, but he retained him. And then um, CBN came with some, um, one of the things they have been saying good about the CBN governor is that, okay, when the world went through serious inflation and recession, serious recession, that uh, he was able to stabilize and were able to come out. But I don't know the science of uh, that uh, 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 adulation because um, from what we had as well, 180 naira to a dollar in 2015-2014, uh, it went it spiraled to like 500 yeah it got to 500 so 60 naira to a dollar for a while before it now cascaded and then retained now at 360 360 362 that been fluctuating between that um which is still very bad from where we are coming from so uh the cbn what we say under mfla has done averagely okay um 
the issue of there was a time they started some intervention funds, uh, where, like in the Africa, they did the anchor borrowers yeah. fund. In electricity, they did some massive investment uh, interventions there. What have come out from those interventions? We don't know because by now we are thinking as at 2016, they have already done you know some intervention in electricity. What has come out of that? So by now we are thinking that would have had rebate meter all over the place. We are thinking about having so many improvements in the electricity sector is nowhere. Then all this intervention in electricity, no matter the policy you bring out, it will not work. Why? Just like America said, you meant you hold on to the national grid, and then you have some draconian ancient policies that tell you that you cannot develop more than ten megawatts of electricity. No, it's, I think it's fifty. When you develop more than ten, or let's law have changed ten. What you do more than that's why the factual law was doing ten ten all over the place. Because what you do more than ten. You are sending to the national grid. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, so, a, it's a national electricity. So what has happened now? Yes, yes. So what has happened now is that first of all we have to start from changing the act because if you don't change the act, no matter what you do, when you finish, that's why Aaron did not happen. That's why uh, Ibon Power, even the one in River State, Ibon Power at a point had to put because I cannot spend my state resources, right. and then we are trying. You now tell me to send it to national grid, and then the national will not distribute it anyhow they like. Where does that happen? Where? <laughs> it's only in place by moonlight that happens. So we are going to say that first of all, that law, that obnoxious law, has to be repealed and replaced with like make it fetter, deregulate the power sector fully. And so that when I'm coming, if I'm choosing a Kedja and I can provide two two thousand megawatts to power the whole of Ikeja local government, and that is me. I have my own unit and I'm selling to. So this one that created the private monopolies in the name of these schools. Inter 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 interacting with uh, Jenkos and then uh, co uh, collaborating with uh, the TCN <laughs> to, to, to rob all of us and say they are doing uh, power supply. It's a mess. So again, that is a uh, debate again. The CBM, where is the CBM? There's a lot of things that have been happening in terms of revenue, uh, uh, you know, Accru warehousing our money and regular accruals. A lot of from 600 or something million dollars from NLNG to the 20 billion dollar contract for NNPC and the rest. The CBN has not made some from the CBN is on the side of the government. They are not actually being the CBN is still opaque okay. in their operation. We don't know their salary, we don't know their budget, we don't know how much they spend. So the money is there with them and then they just disburse the money. So we need to, CBN needs to be more uh, transparent right. in whatever they are doing. Then, in terms of uh, inflation. The inflation is still high. Unemployment is still high. So what are the interventions the CBN needs to do? The CBN governor should not sit down there in the Senate and tell him it's going to be tougher. We gave him that job to make things no, easier. No, we didn't give him the job. Why we gave him the job? No, it's uh, Jonathan. <laughs> that, it's Jonathan. It's Jonathan that gave him the job. Yeah, Jonathan. <laughs> it's his work. So he should not come there and sing to me that this will be tougher. Should I clap for him that this will be tougher? Is he not there to make things easier for us? So they should stop this blame game. They have been in power for four years. I see coming here to tell me that things will be tougher. Is that good news, or you want me to be cheery, or you want me to, you want more people to go and commit suicide because you say things will be tougher? No, we don't. So for that. he's already creating excuses for his in, in future failure. Okay. Now, as I, you talked about the oil and power sector in the way forward, and a lot of people are talking about going towards the non-oil sector. Do you think the government has actually done enough to? facilitate this process. Yemi Saka, quickly. Now, before I go, I need to talk about the CBN governor. Okay. This was a, because Dasuki is in, is in jail, still held in detention for what he did. But Dasuki doesn't control or didn't put a gun to the CBN governor's head to get the money out of CBN, CBN's vault. That the guy was retained by Buhari for four years is an indictment on the morality of Buhari. Because the guy, it may fairly work hand in hand with the, the so-called corrupt government of the PDP. So why, we, why dealing with other people and leaving him there? Was he a state witness? No. Was he, did he sign up to be a prosecution witness and had a plea bargain? No. So no matter what, what, what no matter the, the arguments or the adulations or praise, or praise and worship they want to give him, I'm not buying it. Then secondly, you tell, I, I, I saw the, this is a CBN governor that changed his monetary policy twice in two weeks. I was shocked. And that's the guy you're telling me did well for the economy. That, that, that move alone is enough to scare away any serious-minded investors. Investors, sorry, sorry. Now, and when we got into this mess, not because PDP squandered the money in 16 years of what have you, because we, there was an issue we needed to deregulate the Naira or devalue the Naira. And these people stubbornly did not. And when, and when they were forced to do it, the ground could not hold it. 
The center could not hold the, the pressure, and it caved in. Now, away from that, you look at the economy, they tell me they will, the Nigerians should, why must we be the ones sacrificing? President Bwama Dubai was allegedly spent, they were, why didn't they tell us, allegedly spent to incur a bill of 600,000 pounds while he was sick in UK? Can I make Nigeria, convert that to Nigeria and pump it into just even one airport in Nigeria? When you keep saying Nigerians should sacrifice, Nigerians should, are we, we should we die and then be feeding fat? Go and look at the state out budget. Because, because when Nigerians say there's corruption in this country, the people are working against government, they just say the National Assembly, their salaries, their salaries. See, for the state house, residence of Mr. President and his office, after the budget that we've seen from 2015, which is the same template, they still charge 200 million naira for preparing that budget. They, they charge 200 another millions of naira to pay the budget for the vice president's office, NSA's office, and what have you. They are still buying plates. If you look at the, the budget of the state house this year, again, you still see plates. You still generate one hundred, nine hundred and something, like something million now to buy cooking gas. Are they cooking for gin and genies and or spirits? All right, yeah, Mr. Akash, thank you very much. But you know, <laughs> like that that the, like no, no, no. no there was the economy. You look at this. Everybody say hoy, hoy, hoy. Agriculture. What are, you see, we don't have. You see, when you keep saying everybody should goes to the farm, but you see, you cannot go, you go into agriculture if you don't have a good processing chain of, of food security policy. That is not in place. You cannot have an automotive policy if a Jakuta steel industry is not worked out. You cannot say we want to design the economy if your mining sector is not is, is still being aired by so you are you know it you need to regulate a lot of things. Okay. And we need to go to restructuring. All right, thank you very much. And Mr. Akka advocating for restructuring there. Now away from still on the economy actually, or something <laughs> affecting Nigeria. And uh, we do know that um, the United States has decided to suspend the drop box system of visa renewal for Nigerian regular travelers. And um, as we, what we know, it may not be unconnected to the number of Nigerians who overstay their visit in the U.S. So there are allegations that most people, when they are traveling to the U.S., they say they are going for four months. And they spent like 10 months there. And the United Embassy in Nigeria on Wednesday announced the indefinite suspension of the drop box visa application for Nigerians. But diplomatic and government officials were, however, exempted from the new visa regime. A statement from the embassy, the embassy clarifies. Now, the drop box system has been open to frequent travelers who excluded from the interview session, also excluded as those who had applied for renewal before the announcement of the suspension. Now, with the announcement of the indefinite suspension of the drop box, the embassy stated that the new regime became effective from May 14, 2019. Now, over 300,000 Nigerians apply for visa to travel to the United States of America as non-immigrants annually. It is also gathered that Nigeria accounts for about one-third of visa issued in the continent. The rejection rate is said to be in the region of about 40%. So we are kind of like in the list of Chad, Eritrea, Liberia, Syria alone as countries with highest overstay rules. Now, um, uh, another minister actually said, uh, Association of Foreign Relations Professions of Nigeria said Nigeria should also retaliate and do the same thing and say, okay, before you can come to Nigeria, so you have to go directly to the embassies. But with this development now, a lot of people are saying that because Nigerians overstay. Why are Nigerians overstaying in the U.S.? As if you don't know. <laughs> well, let's, let's hear from our <laughs> when, when I heard it, I... I felt it was actually affect a lot of well, people. The, the issue is that uh, <laughs> there are so many other countries under the list. Yes. But uh, Nigerians have become very prominent because um, America is accusing Nigeria that we have over 29,000 cases yeah. of uh, overstay in four years. And uh, that is alarming for them. So Nigerians have uh, over 29,000. Overstay. Overstay. Over I was even thinking they were going to say 100,000. No, overstay. So <laughs> what has happened is that if Nigerians, Nigerians go. Um, they want to, they have a six months visa, so they want to work instead of just, uh, some of them go with tourist visa and some of them go with student visa, whatever. So, but, there's, but the economy is hard here. Yeah? They still back their work in a, in, a, in a belief or in the hope that they will get uh, some kind of extended stay. Sometimes they don't get it, they overstay and before coming back. Those are the ones that come back, the ones that miss, they are not accounted for those ones. <laughs> so, uh, to, to other countries. So, what has happened is that uh, more and more, we are being treated like you know uh, beggars, uh, and that that is who we are when it comes to the international in the committee of Can nations. Can we say that we put ourselves in this mess? Uh, well, of course we are because uh, our economy is not working. 
uh, the days, imagine America. I remember uh, somebody, a woman in his 70s, told me that he bought his first car for 1,500 uh, naira. And I reminded uh, him that in that time, 1,500 naira is like, uh, it's like 4,000 uh, dollars. Because naira was higher than dollars in the late 70s, even to the early 80s. So that is where we are now. So we have reversed our trend. We keep on going back, going back, going back. Regression, that is what we are talking So people can no longer hold it. So people want to go. That is why you're having a lot of traffic people through Libya. Libya. You have people dying in the, in the sea because some people say instead of staying in this country and commit suicide, <laughs> we, we, we will go, we'll go die and die trying. So it is affecting us. And maybe for the big man, so-called big man in Nigeria, who feels insulted that he will not travel to the US, this is a good news for Nigeria. So they should sit down. Okay, and they uh, and they spend the money Erika, there. let's hear your side on this. Uh, right, for me, uh, I would like to look at it from two points. Okay, you know, quickly, you please. Know, you know, also there are foreign nationals who overstay their visas in Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes, I mean there are a lot of them who are even in Nigeria. Yeah. yeah, or you know, I mean illegally. Yeah. So we don't have immigration, statuses. immigration does a lot of work fishing out those people. But again, um, you know, Republicans typically take a hard stance on immigration in the United States. I mean, it's something about that. Democrats are more flexible, but Republicans are, you know, tough. Being rigid. Yes, are, are being rigid. I, I think what Nigeria should do, you know, yes, it's okay, it's a policy. But uh, something interesting, you know, happened some days ago. The Nigerian Immigration Service said that they've got a web-based system for visa applicants. You know, people could come in, you know, people can apply online and then come in get visas at the airport and come in. You see, the issue is the challenge. Is let's keep working to make our nation better. We should not benchmark our progress by how many people America, the United States, are lying into its, into its territory. No. If they're not aligned people, then let's invite as many people as possible to Nigeria. Let's bring in good hands. Let's bring in good investors. Let's bring in people who will come here and invest huge sums of money and make this country better okay thank you very much you make a madonado well there's a funny scenario that happened someone went for the interview and the person said it was going the last interview he said he was going for shopping and then the u.s official said you spent 10 months so were you shopping for 10 months and the person said yes i was shopping for 10 months so <laughs> that's <laughs> it how can you shop for 10 months but that's no, was waiting for when they were going on sales yeah he's a very wealthy man the United Kingdom has refused to regularize the state. Wow. So you know, there, there are a lot of stories to There are a lot of stories to why. We know why. We know why. We know why. why. Let's not bring it. All All right. Right. If we come for me, I, I pray, and this, this is not about criticizing the government, my partnership. I really want them to tackle the issue of kidnapping and insecurity, yes. especially yeah, when yeah. it comes to killer heads, men. Yeah. If you want to tell me to say that you're, you, you bring um, ash on a particular tribe, because the, the food shortage and crisis we're going into, I was, I was surprised we didn't see it last year. All right. By June, and with the pronouncement from Emi Philly, I, I foresee economic cannibalism. Well, 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 we do hope that all hands are on deck to actually solve this problem. Let's build our country, Nigeria. No matter where you go, Nigeria is your home. Let Nigeria be a better place. Thank you very much, Yemi Saka and Visible K. And uh, Emeka Madinago, oh, looking dashing. You I mean, I mean, <laughs> Thank you very much, our audience, for being a part of Editors Forum. Do join us same time, same station next week for another edition of Editors Forum. I am Rita Omodia. God bless Nigeria. thought you knew them well but guess what you only know just what social media tells you about them did you know this i worked as a waitress before i sold macaroni in traffic or this you know a lot of thank you so much i don't know how much oh, yes how much my salary three thousand five hundred or this after i lost my dad
M M A J nine ten. I sold pure water. Wow. I sold sweet. Is that no more? No more. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh -huh. No more. Yeah. Hey, what celebrities and I get to chat with your favorite celebrities to the point where they talk about their hidden stories from their houses to their glory. All right, what up, it's your man Vector the Viper, aka VEC, still flossing, still bossing, and I'm on Celebrity Zone with Funke Oshi. Listen to this, keep watching Celebrity Zone with my old Emuba, I'm a girl, 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 I'm a girl